here is a video on how to place fractions and decimals in order on the math GD. So here's the prompt. Order the following on the number line below. So we've got some fractions and some decimals. And then down here we have uh, a number line. So starting off here, fairly easy. Every uh, little hash mark here is called out. So there's nothing we have to guess. We don't have to figure out what we're counting by. We're counting by a half, or each increment down here is by a half. So in general, what you want to do to solve these problems is to convert them all to decimals. That's going to be the easiest way to handle these. So we, let's start. This would, is typically a drag and drop question. So 0.4, where is 0.4 going to fall? Well, 0.4 is less or closer to zero than uh, 0 0.5. So we would put that about right here. Now, 1.25, that's obviously more than 1, but less than 1.5. So it's going to go right here in the middle. Now, we have to convert these into decimals. Some of these you might know. Um, if not, let's, let's go through how you would go about doing this. So when I think of three-fourths, what I always tell students to do is think about quarters. Uh, four quarters make a dollar, right? So we can set up an equivalent fraction. If we have four quarters and that equals 100 cents or 100 pennies, right? Um, how many coins would, if you have a, a quarter and you have three of them, how much would that be worth? Well, that would be 75 out of 100. And 75 out of 100 can be converted into 0.75. OK, um, so if we were to drag this one down, three fourths is going to be in between uh, 0 0.5 and 1. Now let's do 11 out of 10. 11 out of 10 is what we call an improper fraction. We have the number on top is bigger than the number on the bottom. And so 10 fits into 11 one time with one remaining. So it's 1 and 1 tenth. Now, one and one tenth, maybe you can say, okay, well, if I have 10 cents, how would you write that in terms of money? If I have one dollar and I have one dime, right? That would be a dollar and 10 cents. So that's one dollar. We even put a money symbol here and then 10 cents, right? So 11 over 10 is equal to 1.1 or 1.10. So now that is going to be less than 1.25 but greater than one. Now a half, half, um, you can think one divided by two. Um, if you don't see it, if you don't know easily what this one is, again, try to convert it out of 100. And what would we do here? Two times what is going to get us 100? Well, we would multiply by 50. So one times 50 is going to be 50 over 100, which is 0.50. So one half is exactly equal to 0.5. That's one I'm always trying to reinforce for students that you really need to know that's great for life. Now one fifth, let's say, um, let's show you a different way. Let's say one thing you can do is what you could even set this up as division. So we have 1.0. So five doesn't fit into one, but it will fit into 10. So if we put our decimal here, how many times does five fit into 10? Well, it's going to fit in two times, and 2 times 5 is 10. So it's going to be 0.2. The other way of doing it, again, is to convert it to out of 100. Okay, 5 times 20 is um, equal to 20 out of 100, or 0 0.20. So this 1 fifth is going to be the smallest of all the numbers, and it would be somewhere, somewhere there. Okay, let's move on. Uh, order the following on the number line below. So we have a similar number line, but now we have harder numbers here. So we have a decimal and we have some fractions. So let's again, let's start with our, our uh, decimal, 0.4. Now 0.4 is going to be right here. Okay, it's less than 0 0.5. Now 1.66 is going to be greater than 1.5, but not quite. 2. So it's somewhere in between 1.5 and 2. Now, these ones are a little bit harder to convert uh, into, you know, out of 100. So what I would do here is actually do the division. So I would do 8 divided into 3. 
Okay, eight doesn't fit into three, but we can put our decimal here and we can see how many times does eight fit into 30. So eight times four is 32. So four is too many. So it's gonna be 0.3. Three times eight is 24. And we subtract these. 24 from 30 is going to be six. Um, and now we can drop down a zero here to make this 60. So eight times eight is 64. So we need to go smaller than eight. So we need seven and 0.37. So this is gonna be equal to 0.37, which is again, smaller than four. So this one we would drag and it would be smaller than four. That's gonna, looks like it's most likely gonna be the smallest one. Now six over five is an improper fraction again. The number on top is bigger. So how many times does five fit into six? One time with one remaining. So this is one and one fifth. So this one we can easily scale up to one and two tenths, or we can even add a zero here to each of these and make it 20 out of 100, which would be equal to 1.20. So six over five is equal to 1.20. So that would be somewhere here, okay, in between one and 1 1.5. Now seven over eight, is um, smaller. Eight over eight would be equal to one, right? So keep that in mind, eight over eight is equal to one. And so this is a little less than one. So even if you can't figure this one out exactly, you would be best to guess that it's gonna be less than one. And we can't quickly do the math. Just to, this, is, this will come up on the GED where you have to do this, this type of long division here. Um, so 8 doesn't fit into 70, so we put our decimal there. How? Uh, sorry, 8 doesn't fit into 7, so we put a decimal here and, and drop down, create a 0 here to make it 70. So 8 does fit into 70. Um, again, 8 times 8 is 64. Uh, 8 times 9 is 72. So 9 is too much, so we'll use 8. And it's going to roughly be 0.8. That's really all the further you need to go, is that it's going to be somewhere in between 0.5 and 1, which is right here. Okay? Now, again, getting a little bit harder, if you look here, they, there's a, a challenge to this problem in that they don't give you what each increment of these are, and they're kind of weird numbers. So this might be somewhat unusual, but it's a good thing to just start here, and you need to figure out what are they counting by? Well, if I take 5.6 and 6.5, what's the distance between here? And it's actually 0.7. So if we do 5.6 plus 0.7, we will get 6.3. And let's see, like if I if we take away the decimal, we think of this as 21, 42, 56, 63, and 7. These are all numbers that 7 goes equal. They're all multiples of 7, right? So if this is 0, and we make this um, 0 0.7, and we make this one 1.4, or kind of like the equivalent of 14, right? So we're counting 0, 7, 14, 21, counting by sevens, but it's just off, just moving the decimal one more. So this is gonna be 2.8, this is gonna be 3.5, 42 or 4.2, right? And then um, the next one will be 49 or 4.9. And then right here will be seven, 7.0. 7 All right, so that is a challenge and I have seen things like that where you have to figure out what are they counting by in order to know accurately where to put the um, the items to so the different fractions or uh, decimals from the prompt here. So let's take 2.7. 2.7 is going to be close to 2.8 but uh, a little bit shy of that and 1.23 is this is an interesting thing. Is 1.23 bigger than 1.4 or less than 1.4? And it's actually less. Even though there's more digits, it's going to be less than 1.4. So that's going to fit in between there. And now these we have to convert into um, something, a decimal, easier to understand. So this one I think is the easiest one. So 4 and 3 tenths is the same as 4 and 30 out of 100 which is the same as 4.3. So 4.3 is just a little bit more than 4.2. So we'll put that one here. Now, 
uh, both of these are about the same. So let's see, if you take eight and you think of multiples of eight, right? And this is assuming you're not good with a division. You could go eight, 16, and then 24. Okay, so three times eight or eight times three is 24. So this is a little less than three. This is roughly, you know, 2.9 something, 2.8 you know, somewhere around there. So even if you have to guess, you're probably going to put it down here. But let's go ahead and let's do the math. Let's just see how many times does 8 fit into 23. So we know it's going to go in 2 times. 2 times 8 is 16. 16 from uh, 23 is going to be 7. And we'll drop down a 0 here. And we'll put our decimal there. Um, so 8 goes into 70 again six times. So I was off with my guessing. Um, so let's put that accurately in there. But I would have been close, right? And so we're at 2.6, which is going to be right at about there. It's less than 2.7, right? Um, so now 4, how many times does 4 fit into 25? Well, if you know your times tables pretty well, you, you know, 4 times 5 is 20. Okay, 4 times 6 is 24. 4 times 6 equals 24. So this is a little bit more than 24. In fact, it's 1 more than 24. Um, and so it's going to be 6. 4 goes into 25 6 times with 1 remaining. Now, again, anytime you're dealing with something out of 4, think in terms of money. Think in terms of quarters, like the 25 cent piece. And you have 1 quarter. 1 quarter is equal to 25 cents. So this 25 over 4 is equal to 6.25, which would fit right here, closer to the 6.3, of course, but somewhere there. Okay. All right. One more to go. Question four. Order the following on the number line below. Now, these are quite a bit different. We've got uh, some negatives here in parentheses. This is what we call absolute value. Here's the absolute value of a negative number. Then we have a negative on the outside of the absolute value of 5. And then we have negative 2 in parentheses squared. Now, look at our number line down here. We have, it looks like we're counting by a weird number. Okay, I see 0 here in the middle, but we don't know what these are, at least not initially. They're not written down. So if this is 0, then these all have to be negative, right? And if this hash mark here is 1.75, and it's and they're all they should they're not going to make things the increments different on the test they're not going to do that so this is going to be negative 1.75 and if this is 3.5 this is going to be negative 3.5 and if this is 5.25 this is going to be negative 5.25 so these are becoming more negative uh, the number is larger but it's actually becoming further away from zero and this will be negative seven. Okay, now let's go through each of these equally. What is a negative negative 6? Well, that's just positive 6. Now, what is the absolute value of 5? So the absolute value of 5 is essentially counting it. How many units is 5 from 0? So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 from 0 is 5 units. That's what the absolute value is. That's the definition. It's how many units is it from 0? It's 5. So what is the absolute value of negative 3? Well, let's do the same thing. If here's 0 and here's negative 3, it's negative 1, negative 2. This distance here is 3. So the absolute value of three, negative 3 is 3. Now, we learned over here the absolute value of positive 5 is 5. But if we have a negative on the outside, we have to apply that to the positive 5. And this will end up being a negative 5. Now, here we have negative 2 in parentheses, and then that's squared. So what that means is negative 2 times negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2. Is it negative 4 or positive 4? Is a negative times a negative positive or negative? And the answer is it's positive, positive 4. All right. So we have one negative, and the rest are all positive. So let's place our negative 5, or the absolute value of, or a negative absolute value of 5 is how you would say that, um, which is equal to negative 5. So where do we place it? Does it go here? Does it go in between here? It actually is going to go right in between here. It's going to be closer to the 5. 
Um, and so it's on this side of the negative 5 because negative, the absolute value of um, negative 5, which is again, because the negative is on the outside. Sorry, I know I misspoke there. It's the absolute value of 5, which is 5 with a negative applied to it, which is it's going to fit here. Now, let's do this, this one. This is the next smallest one, and that would go here because that's actually equal to 3, right? We set up here it's equal to 3. Now, this is equal to 4, which is going to fit here. And this is going to equal 5, which is going to fit on this side of the 5. Let's just put it, put it up there a little bit, and I can draw a line. And then this is equal to 6, so it will be here. Okay, so um, a little commentary here on this. If you're not good at dividing and um, knowing your times tables, this is not an area where I would spend a lot of time focusing. I would spend more time learning skills that come up when you can use a calculator. The majority of the GED test involves a calculator, so I would focus my attention there. That being said, some of this is some real-world stuff uh, applicable beyond the GED. Anyway, good luck.